am so glad to hear all the conversation and everything that's going on in this room. This is fantastic. And I don't want to cut that stuff off. We've got something really important queued up right now. This is absolutely um, a really, really special treat for us all this evening. Um, we've got Trey Radcliffe who's going to be joining us here in just a second. He's queued up online right now. Uh, Trey is someone, as I um, uh, have been known to snap a shutter or two here and there, somebody that I, I started following a while back. Um, can you guys hear me back there? Dave, you got it? Okay. Uh, Trey Radcliffe is an absolutely phenomenal photographer, and he's someone who's taken his passion and turned it into just an amazing business. In fact, his new iPad app is number four on the category, on the travel category at the, at the, uh, the iTunes store, the app store. Uh, it's called Stuck on Earth. Unbelievable application in terms of being able to explore different places on the planet, being able to zoom in on cities, on locations, and see just phenomenal photography. Not only that, Trey's also developed another application called 100 Cameras in One. That's an iPad app as well that is, it deals with photo processing and editing and making some really just amazing, beautiful photography. Um, but the thing that really attracted me to Trey and said, gosh, you know, he would be a great person for this group is just how open and honest he is with everything that he does. So here's someone who, in the photography world, started sharing his secrets. If you guys remember back in April when we, when we interviewed Chase Jarvis, and he was someone who shared his secrets, started telling people, here's how you do this. Here's how you can create this photography. Here's step by step everything that I'm doing. And it absolutely was uh, phenomenal for him and has turned into just a booming business. So if we can switch over and exit this one and switch over to Google Hangout, and hopefully these guys can hear us. And we're going to try something new today, this evening. Uh, we typically Skype everybody in, but Trey is not that one. It should be the other one. There should be another window there. There we go. All right. Trey, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Over. <laughs> So, so we're trying something new this evening. We typically Skype people in, but Trey's like, hey, Jay, Skype's great, but um, on, this, on this Google Plus Hangout, he says, you know, I happen to have 405,000 followers. Um, maybe we could try something on that platform. I said, hey, that sounds pretty good. So, uh, so Trey, thank you for spending a few, few minutes with us this, this evening. Sure, you bet. Thanks for the invite, Jay. I appreciate it. Yeah. So let's get right into it. I know, I know you're busy. I want to be respectful of your time. But um, I think one of the things that resonates with this audience of what you did is that you just had a passion for photography. You just loved what you were doing. And you got into the HDR bit early on in the game. You've been a pioneer of that. And you were able to turn that passion into a business. So one of the questions that, that we have here for you is, how did you know, like when was that time that you knew that, hey, this passion could really turn into a business and really be something profitable and fun? Well, um, you know, we started this website about five years ago and I started it for the, for the love of it. Um, you know, looking back, I'm sure it looks like a, a master plan, but it's been an iterative thing. And, and uh, you know, several years ago, we, we quickly got to the point where we got to over, you know, 100,000 or six figures in revenue. And then I realized that, you know, this can, this can be a real thing. And it's rare that you can take something you're, you're really passionate about and, and turn it into a, a real business. Um, so even though, you know, we'll probably tonight we'll talk a little bit about the business side of it. Really, the, the core of it is always the art. Uh, that's what keeps me uh, the happiest. I always want to make sure I have plenty of time to, to focus on the art. And since that's sort of been the, uh, the, the premises of everything, right, the, the nexus of it all, um, I continue to focus on that. And we slowly expand the business kind of organically. Um, uh, re in recent years, we've expanded it to a, a seven-figure business. Now we have about 10 employees. And, you know, my whole life I've heard, uh, oh, you should, you know, just do what you're passionate about. I always thought that was a lot of, you know, BS. But it turns out to be exactly the truth. And, and I think what happens is, you know, I, I realize now that um, you, you get to create uh, the universe in which you want to live. And in that way, I'm no different than any other human. 
Um, this is just something that I kind of grokked several years ago, and I continue to kind of choose this universe in which I live. Wow. Okay. <laughs> No, that's no, that's absolutely terrific. And that's that's why we wanted to talk to you because that comes through in everything that you do. The passion comes through. But the question becomes how how then can you run this business and maintain that passion? Well, um, you know, with me you kind of just see the tip of the iceberg. We've got uh, an amazing team that helps me out. And I chose from the beginning just to focus on the creative stuff just to focus on the right brain type activity I do love the left brain stuff and I do put on my business hat and this sort of stuff my my background is computer science and math and so even though I can get into my website and do the code and figure out the PHP and and uh, you know I, I could figure all that stuff out really every five minutes that I spend coding my website is five minutes that I should really be spending creating something new and wonderful and kind of exploring that that side. So we've kind of built up this team of, you know, experts in all these various categories. Um, and you know what it's like when you're an entrepreneur and you're sort of a type A and you actually you're interested in everything and you not only uh, want to do everything, but you can figure out how to do everything. Uh, but from the very beginning, we made I made two critical choices. One was I don't have to do everything myself. I can find uh, expertise and friends and pods of people online um, to help me with this stuff um, you know and you know now they're they're paid and so on and so forth um, the other decision was not to ever have any clients um, I never work for clients uh, people offer me stuff all the time to go do a shoot or go do a product shoot or go do commissioned work or whatever and I always say no um, I just haven't built a business like that because um, I'm much more interested in, uh, you know, pure artistic freedom, which is a very elusive thing, by the way. Uh, but we've been able to kind of uh, arrive at this nice, uh, uh, this nice nexus of art and business. These are two things that often collide violently, uh, because I, you know, I do swim in this uh, soup of artists out there. I know what great difficulty so many artists have making money, and it's. Uh, it's a shame, but I think everything is changing now because of the internet. And I just, I, I think I, I see the truth maybe a little bit before everybody else, but it's going to be as true for everyone else as it, is, as it is for me right now. Okay, so go into that a little bit deeper in terms of um, how do you overcome the bias or the influence when you're out, like whether you're in Iceland or in your other places and you're, and you're taking these pictures? Um, I can't help but think that at some point in your mind, you're looking at something saying, well, I don't know if that's commercially viable enough. Or, you know, how do you, how do you stop that from biasing what you're going to photograph? Ah, well, that's a, that's a good question. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. The thing about this is, is that I when I go say, take a photo of anything, yeah. I do not think about whether or not it's commercially uh, interesting. To me, if it's awesome, I take a photo of it. It may not, it may be the kind of thing that I can never license. Um, and I'm kind of at this this point. And I felt, uh, you know, half of my brain has always kind of felt at this point the entire time. But now I definitely feel to the point because, you know, we're we're so we have, we have plenty of of money and cash and and uh, everything is going great. Uh, our profit margins are crazy and. So I don't even think about the money. I just focus on creating awesome things, and the money takes care of itself. Um, you know, if I decide that I come up with an idea for an app, I go, you know, this thing doesn't exist. It should really exist. I want to make it as beautiful and perfect as possible. Um, I just make it. I don't worry about the business model. I don't worry about who might buy it someday. To me, if I think it is interesting, and wonderful, and maybe the world will too. Um, so that's kind of really been my, my emphasis. And I uh, later, you know, after I create this stuff and after I take the photos, then, you know, I'll sit down with my team and put on my business hat and say, okay, well, you know, how could we maybe commercialize this? What can we do to, uh, to sell these assets that we've created? Sure. So to that end, you were, your website, stuckincustoms.com, 
Um, which, by the way, we've been showing your photo, your photography all night uh, this evening. We've been we have it up on the screensaver, and everybody's been like, "Where is this coming from?" Uh, Ewing and eyeing. So uh, uh, that oh, you your your yeah your photography has been the the decoration for this evening, which has been great. But your website, stuckincustoms.com, I mean, you were one of the first ones who really began to share your information and you know post phenomenal photos on Flickr at full res that people could download under Creative Commons. Um, telling them your secrets. What was the what was the inspiration for being so open and transparent about your art? Well, actually, being open and transparent is the natural human way to be. It's the way that children are. Um, and then you know, as we grow up as, into adulthood or whatever adulthood is supposed to be, you know, you're told all these rules. You should keep secrets. You shouldn't tell people what you're doing. Um, you know, you should protect your way of doing things. Uh, and it also, that kind of comes from a, a world of uh, finite supply, right? Um, in a world of finite supply, you do need to protect uh, whatever is unique and rare. But we don't live in a world of um, finite things anymore. There is no shortage of anything. Uh, everything is in surplus. Uh, everything from, you know, knowledge to electricity to, to food to air conditioning. I mean, you know, really, once you hit a certain level, it's, it's not uh, once you're a first world person. And now there's billions and billions of people on Earth that are in this situation where they have shelter and food and the basic necessities of life. Then there's basically a surplus of everything, especially information. So there's no danger in sharing this stuff with the world. And because there is no finite amount of anything, there's basically an infinite amount of it, which means that there's an infinite amount of attention that can be gained for people. Like we've been having these, these Google Hangouts on, on Google Plus, and we have you know, well-known photographers, and then we have lesser-known photographers. So since I have all this unexpected social media power, whatever the heck that means, I, what I've been doing is introducing these new photographers to the world so people can see their work and get to know them. And it, it doesn't at all mean that there's less attention for everybody else because nowadays, thanks to these tools that we have, we all have more attention to give to things. Like I, I could barely remember life before tabbed browsing. Um, <laughs> now with tabbed browsing, now we can pay attention to so many things at once. I, I pay attention to 10x more stuff than I did five years ago. And that was 10x more than the year before. And this trend is just going to continue. So uh, this, is, this is why I share everything, because I know that uh, a, a rising tide raises all ships. Sure. So you're not in Silicon Valley. Neither are we. <laughs> We're in Northwest Colorado. Uh, you know, we've got a town of about 10,000 people. This group here, we've got 212, 213 members um, getting a lot of traction. But um, how, how has that been? I mean, certainly Austin, there's a lot of great technology and innovation going on in Austin. Um, but has, has your location, how, how has that helped you? Or how has that, ha, have there been challenges with not being in maybe one of the, one of the major uh, tech places? No, I, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where I am because where I am is where I am. I'm the important thing in my life, right? Not, it's, <laughs> I'm on the internet. Right? The internet is everywhere. And in a lot of ways, when you're outside of that little uh, group think in Silicon Valley, you can come up with you know, really unique stuff. Um, I, I you know, make occasional forays into that uh, fertile uh, Silicon Crescent from time to time. And we did a, uh, for example, we were at one of Jason Calacanis' launch events for iPad stuff. And of we were like the only ones from out of state. And we were like the audience winner. Because I think what happens is you end up talking and thinking about the same kind of stuff that everybody else is. And when you're independent, you can kind of spiral off on your own thought patterns and do things that are totally unique. I, I remember I was out there at one of these uh, dinners, right, in, in San Francisco where all these, you know, guys, these Web 2.0 guys are sitting around a table. And, and everyone is talking about Quora, you know. And I thought, oh, man, this must be pretty important. But also I knew that at the time that, you know, Cora is this, um, you know, this uh, c very confusing thing that the common man would never understand. And, and it's uh, completely inscrutable, you know, to someone like my mom or whatever. So how is this thing ever going to get big? But it's all anybody could talk about out there. And I'm afraid that every other people 
uh, who other entrepreneurs or whatever, they were all hearing about this. They thought, oh, this must be important. Everyone is talking about it. So maybe I should learn about it too. Maybe it is a big deal. So I think you accidentally, even just being exposed to this stuff, it does kind of start using up some of your valuable brain cycles that should be spiraling off on independent thought. So I think some of the best ideas, some of the most interesting ideas will often come from outside of that group think. It's nice to be isolated from that. Sure, I mean, there's a big echo chamber and, 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 and that certainly is, is reflected in what you said there. And, and being in Steamboat, one of the things that we really value here is the quality of life and being able to go out just right out our door and there's just so many activities and it's a gorgeous place. And, and by the way, you're welcome to come here anytime. There's some, I can show you some great places to take photos and, 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 and all that. So we'd, so we'd, we'd love to have you come. But let's, let's shift gears for a quick second. Um, uh, not totally, but, but related to what you were talking about with the iPad stuff. Because I think that what you've been able to do is you've been able to say, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an artist, I'm a photographer, I understand this. But then you're able to leverage that into a completely different world, completely different uh, 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 business model with your iOS apps. So how how is that? I mean, how do you how was that getting into an aspect of business that's completely foreign, completely out of your comfort zone or area of expertise? Well, it's uh, for one thing, it's not totally out of my area of expertise since I do have a, a background in computer science and and this sort of thing. Now, I didn't do the programming myself, but I you know I did the the design and. Uh, the UI flow, and, and I understand the algorithms and what's happening and so on and so forth. So that that helped us to get a really good app out there. Um, but uh, I think even if I hadn't known that, um, there's always this uh, uh, assumption that when you go into a, a new um, technology or you go into a new uh, situation, that everybody else in that situation is an expert and that you're not and you really shouldn't be swimming in those waters. Well, that's that's not true. I mean, everyone in there is just fairly uh, new and, and they're all getting their, their feet wet and, and this sort of thing. So there's no such thing really as an expert in all of these brand new technologies. As long as you have a desire to learn and a, a natural curiosity, uh, you can almost go into any of these areas and figure it out in a relatively short time frame. It's not like you have to go to you know school for six years to learn to be a brain surgeon in order to make a, an iOS app. Uh, you know, anybody can really do it. The, the hard part, uh, you know, you have to have these, these two elements. One is uh, you have to have something really high quality uh, that is, is bulletproof, and the other thing is you have to have the marketing. Um, so these, uh, you know, we we didn't know what we were doing going into it, of course, uh, but. Um, we went into it and uh, built something that made intuitive sense to me. And uh, we were our two apps. We got uh, our photography app was the number one photography app. Uh, you know, these vacillate up and down in the rankings, of course. And then our, our new app, Stuck on Earth, that's gotten up to number two in travel. And this is incredibly difficult to do. Wow. And I don't, it's, uh, uh, I don't mean to make it look easy or anything. It's very, very hard. Um, but uh, we've learned a lot along the way. We made a lot of uh, mistakes. And, you know, again, you're talking about all the, the, the good stuff that's happened, what you're not talking about. And what most people don't know is just all the, you know, hundreds and thousands of mistakes that we have. And, you know, we don't let the mistakes bother us. We, uh, you know, we dust ourselves off and, and go on and try new things. We forgive ourselves immediately. This is, this is something that most people don't know that they're allowed to do. Uh, make mistakes and then forgive yourself and try to do better next time. Um, so that's really kind of the culture we have around here. It's very fun. It's very lighthearted. And we just, we're just like a bunch of children uh, putting Legos together and goofing around. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And either way, it's a, it's a nice time. Well, I have, a, I have a specific question about the Stuck on Earth app um, because one of the things that really differentiated that and separated it from a lot of the others is that the... Uh, the narration when you open the app and you go through it is this is this woman's voice and she's just so inviting. Whose idea was that? Because I think that so many of these apps that we open up and they're like, okay, so now what? Now what do we do? And I have to figure that out. And whose idea was it to do the narration in in this app? Well, um, 
I came up with that because I wanted it to be very intimate. I know people have a very intimate relationship with their iPads. They sit with it on their couch. They take it to bed. They take it to every room in their house. And basically, you know, you, you, this thing is, is very close to you. So when a voice could actually talk to you in a very personal way, you know, she, she says hundreds of different names. If you happen to type in one of the names that she knows, she'll, she'll say, welcome back, Jay, and this sort of stuff. And um, we found this gal. Her name's Karen Hutton. She's a professional voice actor. She's amazing. Um, just as part of this nap network I've accidentally built up, we, we sell this HDR video tutorial where I kind of teach people how I do my photography and so on and so forth. And we have these insider forums called the Clubhouse and, there's a thread where people are asked to introduce themselves and say, what do you do in real life? And I was reading through them and this gal was in there and she said, Oh, I'm a professional voice actress. So I kind of filed that away. I thought, Oh, I might use her someday. So I contacted her and normally she charges, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to do this stuff, but she did it all for free uh, because she, wow. you know, we, we get along and uh, we go on photo walks together and it's uh so it's been as much fun for her as it was me, and we spent a bunch of time on the phone together going through this. And I don't know if you've been through these voice recording sessions before, but they're really, they're really fun. Uh, so it was a great experience. It, it felt right to me. It felt fun, and it felt different, and and uh, that's that's why we did it. Sure. Well, I, and I think that's just part of the the quality and the depth that you go to 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 create that experience. So congratulations on the success with that with that app and. Uh, so can you tell us, are there anything, is there anything coming up new for you that's um, on, the, on the horizon? Um, you know, I'm moving to a town a lot like Steamboat. I'm moving to a little mountain uh, town in New Zealand, to Queenstown. Oh, wow. So I'm moving my family, my wife, and three kids. Uh, we're going to do that early next year. And uh, we're really looking forward to it because, um, you know, I do live my life on the Internet. All I need is a good internet connection and I, I, I know uh, what kind of lifestyle you guys have there and it's, it's wonderful. You know, that's, that's where people want to be. And I think now, thanks to, thanks to the internet and thanks to your ability to connect with like-minded people who want to help you and help themselves accomplish great things, it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, so I'm, I'm tremendously excited about this sort of personal move and then professionally, we have all kinds of things going on. I, I like to keep a few secrets here and there because I like to surprise people with uh, things once they work out. And if they don't work out, I just stay quiet about it. <laughs> and I, right, right. Well, I'd love to open up if anybody, does anybody have a, have a, have a question for Trey on, in terms of anything on his photography or iOS apps or, or anything like that? I'm, I'm buying a drink for the first, first person that's a question. Is it a drink I'm buying? Uh, well, Trey, thank you so much for your time. This is awesome. I'm glad we were able to connect, and, and that's a great story about you going to New Zealand. And uh, I think, I'm, I'm sorry, we have, oh, you have a question. See, that's what it takes. It takes a few minutes to be able to, to um, so hang on. Let me, let, me, let me go over here, and uh, you get a drink. <laughs> My a um, camera right there. Okay, hi. <laughs> Hello. My husband um, is fascinated with his HDR apps on my iPhone. <laughs> is there a camera that you'd recommend? to go to purchase that has those same sort of features or what would you recommend for his next step? Yeah, so after you've uh, you know used some of these apps on the iPhone and you maybe want to get a, a more robust camera to do some, some more robust things, uh, I have a section on my website. This is a very common question. Um, you know, up at the top it says, you know, my gear or stuff that I use or what I recommend or something like this. And so I have, um, you know, it's like the old Montgomery Ward uh, calendars for washing machines. It's like a good, better, and best. So I have basically the good camera, the better one, and the best one, um, you know, all at different price points, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, but cameras are so good nowadays. You can, uh, you can get this effect with almost any camera. There's some post-processing involved. Uh, so you kind of need to be comfortable with this idea of taking the, taking the photo off the camera, putting it onto your computer, and then doing some, uh, doing a little post-processing. But that's really fun. Um, in fact, uh, that's sort of the hidden secret of all this stuff is that uh, once you start doing some of this post-processing and you see the dramatic effect that you have on this photo that was previously flat, 
Um, you know, you everyone likes to take photos nowadays, and you're in some place magical, and you go out, you take a photo, and you come back, and it just feels flat or feels empty. It doesn't have the evocative uh, feelings that you had when you were there. So just with a little bit of post processing, you can you can do some amazing things to it, and that that gives you enough sort of internal mojo to keep going, and you can kind of find this new creative part of yourself that might have been. Uh, pushed down since childhood from our, our school system or whatever ends up beating the, the artist out of all of us. It's really still there. Well, and there's, and there's a ton of information on Trey's website, stuckincustoms.com, a uh, ton of free information. And then we want to get further into it. There's a number of, of eBooks. I've got several of them. And then he's got the, 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 the video tutorials and the whole thing. So it's been a phenomenal, uh, it's a phenomenal place. Uh, one more question. Trey, can, can you take one more? Are you okay on time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, hang on one second. This is Tarsha. You would have gotten a free drink if you had. <laughs> I'm sure I can talk you into that later anyway. Here's the camera so, right there. <laughs> Hi, Trey. Okay, so I just wanted to know, um, two-part question. What is your favorite, most artistic photograph of that you've ever taken? And then the second one, what is the craziest thing you've ever done to get a photograph, like ride a yak to Machu Picchu and fall off a cliff and be hanging by fingernails and still get the photograph? Oh, um. <laughs> good. I'm glad we asked him a tough question. Well, uh, what's my favorite photograph? It's really hard because I get so close to these things. You know, I spend so much time working with them. It's, it's, you know, I have three kids and I don't know which one's my favorite. Depends on the day. And so it, I don't know which is my favorite photo. I, I have sort of this portfolio section on my website that I store on Smug Mug, and I kind of have a first page of my favorites, and they all vacillate based on my my mood. It's like a favorite movie, you know. It just it depends on the genre. You know, I have a favorite sci-fi movie, a favorite um, sci-fi book, and for fantasy or nonfiction, it, it depends. So I, I hate to give you such a strange answer like that, but really, it is. It's like, it's like having children. Uh, the craziest thing I've done, um, oh gosh. Um, I don't know, you know, it, it actually is related a little bit to having kids is that I, I am less risky than you might think. Um, I do go out and uh, do a lot of off-roading and, and these sorts of things, but I never do anything that would really come close to risking my life, you know. I. I'm on a lot of mountain tops or building tops, but I never get like, uh, I'm never really that close to, to having extreme danger. You know, I find that you can find amazing photos without really having to get into uh, sketchy situations. I think one of the hardest things I did was um, I hiked, I carried all my equipment about 40 kilometers through the Andes with these uh, five Russians. Most of them were ex-Soviet military. Uh, these guys were tough. I thought I was tough, but these guys were tough. And the toughest thing about them is that for every meal for two weeks, they had borscht. That was, uh, that was tough. Um, but, you know, no, nothing, nothing too extreme. I, uh, I, I keep it pretty tame. Well, Trey, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you've got a whole new host of fans here uh, in Steamboat for sure. And, and thanks for being able to do this on Google Hangout. This has worked out terrific. Hopefully it's worked out well on your end. Uh, easy peasy all the way around. So thank you so much. And again, you're welcome to come to Steamboat anytime. Uh, we'd love to have you here, get you on the mountain or whatever the case is, bring your family and uh, we'll roll out some Steamboat hospitality for you. So everybody look at that camera right over there and wave a tray. Say thank you so much. Thanks guys. Thank you. <laughs>